Hello, my name is Alan Papalia, and I am presenting Network Localization-Based Planning for Autonomous Underwater Vehicles with Inter-Vehicle Ranging. This work was done in collaboration with John Leonard. There are a number of tasks which have benefited greatly from the capabilities of AUVs. A list of such tasks should include sensing of algal blooms or mapping of the seafloor. Multi-AUV systems have the potential to improve our ability to accomplish such tasks by allowing for autonomous and distributed oceanographic sensing, achieving efficiencies and sensing resolutions otherwise difficult to accomplish. However, multi-AUV deployments have been largely limited by challenges in localization. There are a number of existing approaches to multi-AUV localization. High-cost inertial navigation systems allow for AUVs to reliably track their position but are generally too costly to scale to large numbers. GPS fixed acoustic beacons require human labor to set up and localization is limited to locations within range of the beacons. Finally, recent work uses a leader follower methodology where a group of AUVs keep relative positions to a leader AUV with high accuracy localization. However, this approach relies on leader functionality and requires that followers stay within a set of predetermined formations. An exciting direction for multi-AUV localization that avoids these limitations uses range measurements between AUVs to perform localization. This can be thought of as similar to the manner in which distance measurements from satellites allow for absolute localization of a device via GPS. This use of inter-device range measurements to perform localization is a well-studied problem known as sensor network localization. Techniques to solve this localization task have been developed with many possessing favorable qualities in terms of scalability, ability to perform distributed localization, and robustness to sensor noise. However, a notable limitation in the use of sensor network localization lies in the fact that the localization quality is a function of the network geometry. We will refer to this relationship between network geometry and the ability to localize as the network rigidity. Greater rigidity implies a configuration more favorable for localization. We use the graph seen here to represent a network of AUVs with the edges between the nodes representing range measurements between corresponding AUVs. Networks in which members do not have range measurements from a sufficient number of other nodes, or in our case AUVs, will have ambiguous localizations. In the case highlighted here, the upper right node has only one corresponding range measurement, and as such, can only be estimated to be somewhere on a ring centered at the node to which it has a measurement. Beyond the connectivity of nodes in the network, localization also depends on the spatial arrangement of the network. In the highlighted scenario, though all of the nodes are sufficiently connected, the arrangement of the nodes causes a large degree of localization uncertainty in the direction along the red arrow. As a general intuition, a preferable arrangement will have nodes spread out and well connected, causing the network to appear well triangulated. In the currently highlighted arrangement, two rigid networks are shown, where the connectivity and well-triangulated formation are preferable for the sensor network localization task. As one would expect, adding an additional measurement to an already rigid network improves the rigidity of the formation. These examples demonstrate the fact that the success of sensor network localization relies on the geometry of the network. Deploying multi-AUV networks using sensor network localization will require algorithms to balance the ability for the AUVs to freely explore with a need to retain rigid formations. This motivates the need to develop planning algorithms which can maintain network rigidity while allowing for AUVs to flexibly plan paths to goal configurations. We begin by using the kramer rao lower bound to formalize the notion of network rigidity. The kramer rao lower bound is a theoretical lower bound on the variance achievable by any unbiased estimator. Inside our usage of the kramer rao lower bound, the theta represents the positions of the AUVs in space and the parameters of the sensor model. The AUV positions and sensor parameters can then be used to calculate the Fisher information matrix for the generic network localization problem. By then taking the inverse of the Fisher information matrix, we are able to lower bound the variance of any estimator. Using the kramer rao lower bound to represent localization quality, we define the network rigidity as the value of the least non-trivial eigenvalue of the Fisher information matrix. Due to the structure of this representation, trivial eigenvalues are guaranteed to always be zero. Further discussion of the trivial eigenvalues can be found in our paper and cited works. 
using this representation of network rigidity and then begin to perform path planning while enforcing that the network is not allowed to drop below a predetermined minimum rigidity. However, a fundamental challenge in performing this planning is what is known as the curse of dimensionality. As the dimensions of the planning space increase, the general complexity of the problem can be thought to increase exponentially. Because each additional AUV in the network adds dimensions to the planning problem, this becomes a limiting factor in the scalability of this multi-AUV network. Previous work on rigidity-constrained planning has used potential field-based planning, in which the robots seek to follow the gradient of potential field towards goal location. These approaches suffer from local minima in the potential field which the planner can get stuck in, preventing it from finding a valid set of trajectories to the goal locations. The problem of local minima becomes more worrying as the dimensionality increases and the potential field becomes more complex. We look to build a planner which does not rely on gradients and as a result is not at risk of local minima. A substantial part of our planning approach is the use of prioritized planning in which a predetermined order is assigned to the AUVs and the AUVs will each then execute their planning independently in this sequence. In addition to prioritized planning, we formulate the planning problem as planning on a graph. In our approach, we build a probabilistic roadmap by sampling the free space and environment and building a graph that connects all of the sampled locations. This approach has empirically shown computational advantages in planning in high dimensional spaces, but more importantly, allows us to enumerate and keep track of all possible locations the AUVs can occupy. The value of this will be made apparent later in this presentation. A limiting factor to the use of prioritized planning in this problem is the fact that network rigidity is a function of all members of the network, and as a result, there's a complex coupling between all of the AUVs. Early in the planning sequence, it is possible for an AUV to plan a trajectory such that the network would be non-rigid regardless of the subsequent trajectories generated. To enable use of prioritized planning, we use heuristics and form constraints between AUVs to encourage the generation of trajectories that do not cause low rigidity configurations. We represent these constraints between AUVs with what we will refer to as constraint sets. These are sets of locations on the planning graph which represent the locations an AUV can occupy while satisfying constraints such as being connected to the other network members or forming a rigidly connected network. For every AUV and time step, we compute these sets. We then require that the AUV's plan pass such that they stay within the valid set at every time step. By enforcing that the AUV must stay within the valid set, we are requiring that it adhere to rules which have heuristically shown success in generating trajectories for rigid networks. These constraint sets represent how an AUV interacts with a network of already planned AUVs. And as such, building the constraint sets for a given AUV requires all of the trajectories of the preceding AUVs to have been generated. For this reason, the constraint sets for an AUV are generated immediately after planning of the preceding AUVs has been performed. Further details on these sets and their relationships can be found within our paper. To actually compute the constraint sets for an AUV, we begin at time step 0 and iteratively compute the constraint sets for the next time step. This process continues until the valid set is found to contain the goal location for that AUV, at which time planning begins. We require that the valid set is within the reachable set, and that the reachable set is all locations reachable from the valid set of the previous time step. This recursive formulation of the valid set means that we know that if the valid set contains a goal location, then the AUV will be able to plan a path to the goal while staying within the valid set at every time step. Furthermore, we know that the set-based representation lends itself to efficient computation. We know that valid locations are a subset of reachable locations, and thus we do not need to check the rigidity of locations that we know are not reachable. It is possible that the goal location is never found to be in the valid set. This is often either represented by the valid set becoming empty at a time step, or the valid set not adding new locations in subsequent time steps. In these cases, we can stop the construction of constraint sets and generate a conflict state. In this event, we record the time and location of the previous AUV at the time of conflict and restart the planning process of the previous AUV while disallowing it from occupying any conflict states. This allows us to try to flexibly recover from earlier trajectories, which may prevent future AUVs from finding valid paths. It is also possible that the planning process fails, even though there originally was a valid path to the goal location. 
This occurs when conflicts are added and the AV is forced to replan its path while taking the new conflicts into account. In these cases, we reconstruct the constraint sets for that AV and then continue the planning cycle. If no failures occur in the planning phase or while generating the constraint sets, then the planning framework will iterate over all AUVs in the network and generate a trajectory for the entire network, which maintains a pre-specified rigidity at every given time step. In comparing our approach to a standard RRT implementation, we observe that we are able to maintain a minimum rigidity throughout the entire trajectory of the network. The RRT implementation is not capable of guaranteeing this and dips below the minimum specified rigidity at several points along its trajectory. Further investigation of these two planners indicates that our approach leads to reduced localization error and is capable of planning in reasonable times for moderate numbers of AUVs. These results warrant further work on the scalability and computational efficiencies of our approach. In addition, this work is a single manifestation of what rigidity constrained planning could look like. Extension of this work should consider other heuristics to be used in the constraint sets or other planning frameworks which avoid prioritized planning entirely.